In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get going on exam view. Exam view is a really powerful way to create questions for tests and that can be easily um, imported into Moodle for online assessment. So I'm going to show you how to get started with exam view first so you can get your questions going, format them the way you want, and then uh, later on I'll show you how to get them all into Moodle and then you can start testing online. All right, so exam view. I've opened up my exam view and I'm in test generator and you can pick either one you want, uh, create a new test or wizard. I'm going to go create a new test from scratch and my test is going to be called demo. Okay, now this, pop, this bubble that pops up is actually really helpful. What it's telling you is you can choose your questions in different ways. You can pick them from a list, you can select randomly, you can select by standard if that's listed in your banks. You can pick them all. You can select by criteria if that's in your bank. Or you can select while viewing. I personally like to select while viewing. I like to see the questions that I'm choosing. All right, so how exam view works is like this. Um, exam view needs banks, okay? And different publishers will give you banks for different subjects. For example, social studies or math. You know, you can get these banks. And these banks hold all these different types of questions. What you're going to be doing is sifting through and selecting which questions you want, maybe perhaps by topic or chapter or strand. All right. So that little pop-up bubble was showing me what was going on up here. Up here at the top is what that was explaining. I can select randomly, I can choose from a list, or I can view. I'm going to do it by viewing. Now, somehow in my exam view copy, I ended up with a statistics bank on my drive. Well, normally in my school, what we do is we share our banks on a shared folder. So I'm going to show you how to do that, and then I'll show you how to navigate around. So what this window is asking you is, okay, where do you want me to find these banks? So notice up here, I'm sorry, down here, it has a little folder and says C. Well, it's looking on my computer. Since in my school we share our banks, I need to go to our shared folder. So I just hit that folder, and it's showing me, like, okay, now where do you want to go? I'm going to go to Staff Shared. And within Staff Shared, we have an exam view folder and we have banks. So these are all the banks that we have loaded, all set on the server for us to access when we want to make tests. Okay, I'm going to go to a geometry one. Okay, notice we have different ones. We have Spanish, we have um, Saxon math. I believe there's some social studies in here. Okay, I'm going to go to geometry. I'm going to hit select. What this has done now, it's gone in the bank, and within that bank, it says I have different chapters. Okay, so let's say I just finished, oh, I don't know, chapter three in geometry. So I am going to select this. Once I select the chapter, it drops down to this box. That means this is what you're going to start pulling from. All right, let's say I wanted to do, I was like, oh, I don't mean to do chapter three. I can select it and remove it, and I can pick another one. Let's say I was actually on chapter four. You could also do mixed things. You know, by no means do you have to follow a textbook by letter. Maybe you have some questions from chapter five or chapter seven. Okay, you can pick different chapters and you can pick the questions pertaining to those. So let's say I have a little medley of four, seven, and eleven. So I pick those and I'm going to go to next. By the way, it's telling me I have 178 questions. All right. So in this view screen, what happens is it is showing you the question. It shows you the question. It shows you the answers, like if it's multiple choice. It shows you the rationale and it gives you feedback. OK, so this is just one question. So if you wanted this question, what you would do is you would select the check bar, the checkbox next to it. And that means this question is going to be included on your test. So you can scroll through and do that. You're like, oh, this is a really good question. I'm going to check this one. Oh, I don't like that one so much. OK, so you can do this visually. Again, you could have chosen to pick from a list or pick randomly as well. OK, those are some other options. I chose to see them. So I'm just going to pick a couple more here to give you an example. Now, all these questions that I'm picking are only from Chapter 4. I want to also pick questions from Chapter 7. So I'm going to this drop-down box, and it's going to um, bring me to questions from Chapter 7. So again, I'm going to go through and figure out what I like. Oh, here's one. It's got fractions. Must be scary. Here's another one. Now, notice over here, total questions on test. It's taken those three from before and these two that I've added. All right, I'm just going to scroll down and pick something uh, here. Okay, so I can just go around. Now, usually on the bottom, they have the non-multiple choice. They'll start having questions that are um, maybe open-ended or things you have to graph. So just be careful. There might be a little mix of how your questions are. So you might want to keep an eye out for, um, you know, written answer as opposed to multiple choice. All right, then I want to pick some questions from Chapter 11. I'm going to pick uh, this question, it's multiple choice. And I'm going to pick this question, it's multiple choice. Okay, finish. Now what exam view has done is it's taken those questions that I've picked from those different chapters in geometry and put them all here. Okay, so kind of straightforward, here's your test. Well, there are more things you can do with it. You don't have to, you're not stuck with this particular test or order. Notice up here, this is highlighted. So if you wanted to change the name, you can hit edit 
and you can name rename the test. So I can call this test chapter 4, 7, 11, whatever. Okay, so you can always change the test name. So when you're first starting out and you're stressed out about the test name, don't worry about it, put whatever, and then you can fix it later. Okay, now what ExamView does is multiple choice is the title, and that means all the questions following are multiple choice. Voila, we happen to have seven multiple choice. The last pages give the answer, how many points it's worth, um, if it has an objective, if it has a topic, if it has a national standard, Okay, so you have all these informa this information that comes with your banks. All right, now let's talk about order. If you were going to put this on Moodle, you know, you can change the order later in Moodle, but let's say you were going to use it just the way it is in exam view, and you wanted to print it like this and give a paper test. And you don't want number one to be number one. You can change the order of your test. You can do all these things within exam view. To change the order of your questions, you're going to go to questions, which is up here in the, this menu. I get file, edit, view, select, question. And I'm going to go to reorder. And what this does is it lists all the questions. Also, there's eight questions. What you can do is take a question and move it around. Let's say I want the fifth question to be the second question. I want the sixth question to be the last question. Okay, so you can move things around that way. And then, okay, it'll reorder and renumber for you. Okay, so you can change things around that way. Other things you can do in exam view is, let's say you want to add your own question. These questions are good, but they're, you know, there's something specific you're asking or you want the kids to know. What you can do is go to question and you can make a new question. You have all these choices, types of questions to do. Since this tends to be a multiple choice test, I'm going to pick multiple choice. Okay. And it's telling you that if you are to build a question on this test, that question will only be available on this test. It will not save to the bank. Okay. So if you're going to want to use this question again, you're going to have to open this test, copy it, and move it. It's not going to save to the bank. So what you can do is you can type your question, you know, what is six plus seven question mark, and then you can put your options here, uh, negative 18, 13, okay. And you pick which one is the right answer. So it's pretty easy to make a question in exam view. Set up your question, put in your options, select the correct option. All right, if you wanna add more things, um, if you wanted to add more information, you click info, and you could put some information. Maybe you know the standard this pertains to. Um, maybe you know a GLIC versus Common Core, okay, or learning objective or chapter. You can put other information if you'd like, or you can just leave it alone. And then you hit record. And now we've added a ninth question, okay? And let's say you want to add another question. Let's say you want to add like an essay type question or short answer. You can do that. Put short answer in. Um, you can ask what is a, I don't know, an obtuse angle. Maybe something they have to explain. Something like that. And then you'd put your answer here. Now, here's a problem. The question I just asked is maybe more like an essay type. In a short answer, you're going to want something specific. So kids can answer this different ways. So maybe short answer is not the best one to use here, or maybe this question is not what you want. If you want it to be a short answer, you're going to want to change your questions to make grading, the computer grading, easier. So if I said, what kind of angle is greater than 90 degrees? I'm going to save you the typing. If I said, what type of angle is greater than 90 but less than 180 degrees? I can put for my answer here, obtuse. And then I would record that. Okay? So that way, the computer is going to be looking for the word obtuse. And in Moodle, you can change, um, you know, maybe it's capitalized. Perhaps there's a spelling error. Or you'll be able to fix all that. All right, now that I've showed you some of the basics of exam view, one thing I'm going to show you for those of you that are going to print is you don't have to print all these answer sheets after. Okay, you don't need to have that. And when, the more questions you add, the more answer pages you have. So on your test, if you went to your test, you can um, fix it so that it'll only print just the questions and then maybe it'll give you an answer strip or you just want one copy of the answers for yourself, but you want the other one to print off for the kids. And you can also print multiple versions, too, in case you have kids that are sitting too close together. I'll show you how to do that. In test, I'm going to go to layout. And in layout, you know, you can change how it looks, spacing in between. Maybe you have a lot of information you want to squeeze into less paper. But I'm going to go over here to answers. Okay. Um, you can do, it has answers for true and false, multiple choice. That means it's going to leave this little blank here. If you don't want that, maybe they're doing like a Scantron and you don't want to have a little blank there, just take them off. You can uncheck them. Okay. So if you don't want them to write the answer directly next to the question, you can remove that. Answer key. When you want to print your answers or things that are going to be the answer key, if you just want it to be the answer, then you need to go and uncheck all of these extra things. 
And that means you will not get giant pages of, you'll just get the answer for number five is B. You're not going to get all the blah, blah, blah that comes with it. So that's something you might want to consider too when you're um, saving on paper, if you don't really need all that stuff. Okay, you can remove all those from the answer key. All right, so I'm going to cancel that because I'm not going to save any of those changes. But the way I got that got there was test and layout. Okay, so I've showed you how to get started, how to name your test, how to pull some questions, um, and how to find your banks. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you some more things to do with ExamView. Thank you.